human body is a tool of perception. Its mundane function is to observe, participate, initiate, and record experiences in the physical world. To do so, it uses the five physical senses of hearing, seeing, touch, smell, and taste. It then reports these physical impacts to the lower mind for evaluation. The lower mind evaluates these vibrational impressions and makes decisions based upon its attraction or repulsion to the impressions. The decisions made may result in an action, an action that is in line with the thinking, or perhaps complete indifference, no action at all. The human body is also a matrix for transformation and transfiguration. Aside from its common functions, it can also act as a key component of a more specialized divine function. If the different systems of the body are used as originally intended, the consciousness of the human being can be returned to its divine state. This can be done by a gradual process of purification that raises the vibration of the microcosmic life system to a frequency that matches or harmonizes with the frequency of the divine realms. The microcosm is the eternal life system of the human being. It can be viewed as a circular container composed of seven spheres, one sphere inside of another. In the center of the microcosm is the divine spark, which we will discuss in further detail later. From time to time, a human being is generated by the microcosm. The human being has four bodies. There's the physical body, which is visible to our sight. We are familiar with that. But there are bodies that are not visible to our sight. There's the etheric body, the astral body, and a mental body. These three vehicles are not visible to the naked eye, but they are of tremendous importance to the functioning of the body, which we call the personality. Every incarnation, a completely new personality is generated by the microcosm. There are three sanctuaries within the human body. There's the head sanctuary, the heart sanctuary, and the pelvic sanctuary, the sanctuary of life. The three sanctuaries of the human being act as vibration centers. In order to achieve the level of vibration necessary for a total transformation of the microcosm, these three sanctuaries must undergo purification. By purification, we mean that the vibration of the personality and by extension, the vibration of the microcosm must be raised to a level that harmonizes with that of the universal spirit. The heart plays a key role in this process of divine purification. The 
The heart sanctuary is associated with feelings and emotions. The spirit spark is a latent energy center that is not under the control of the human consciousness or ego. It does not respond to the will or command of a trained ego. So it cannot be awakened or ignited by exercises or occult practices. When the spirit spark awakens, it comes into resonance with our consciousness, with the center of our soul. And this center of the human soul, the center of the human consciousness, also awakens and starts to look for answers because life starts to become something very strange. All the former personal goals and objectives become less important. When the human being begins to long for something that is beyond our ability to find in this world, a special kind of yearning develops. This yearning is a desire that reaches the spirit spark, which through its resonance with the vibration of this longing attracts Gnostic light powers. The human consciousness starts to look for something deeper, for something truly meaningful. If the person starts to go the path based on a true yearning of the heart, then that person can start a process of transformation and a force, a vortex of power, can gradually unfold. You may look at this as a vortex of energy, but also as a rosebud that is blooming. We can think of the heart as an alchemical laboratory. The light ethers emanating from the blossoming rosebud can stream up into the head sanctuary and fill that center with the pure, refined vibration received by the heart sanctuary. When the Gnostic light forces are able to fill the head sanctuary, a purified, new thinking is made possible. In various ancient traditions, and also in modern science, a special connection is recognized between the heart and the brain. This is a pathway that has been an important part of the human personality being for a very long time. When this power has grown strong enough to begin transforming the head sanctuary in a permanent way, then it can also flow into our sanctuary of life, influencing everything that we do. We call this movement the Kundalini of the heart. It is a Kundalini that does not begin with a focus on the root chakra. It begins in the heart. We will demonstrate its movement shortly. The head sanctuary is the seat of human consciousness. Aside from the physical brain, it is the physical workspace of the mental body of the human personality. It is home to three important endocrine glands, the pineal, pituitary, and thyroid. It is also the organ of sense perception, housing four of the five natural senses. The pituitary gland and its associated chakra are said to be the seat of the soul. 
while the pineal gland and its chakra are associated with the link to the spirit, a link which is presently inactive for the majority of humanity. The etheric body is an invisible matrix from which the dense physical body is constructed. It is a system of lines of force that provides the underlying framework for the features and organs of the human body. And for this reason, it is called the etheric double. The etheric double is also known as the vital body because it imparts energy and vitality to the physical body. The universal teachings maintain that physical atoms are in fact hollow. These hollow physical atoms are permeated by etheric atoms which are prismatic in shape and impart life and vitality to the physical atoms. If these prismatic atoms can be purified by the divine radiations of spirit so that their vibration is raised to a divine level, a wondrous transmutation can take place within the hollow physical atom. We can compare the relationship between the physical body and the etheric body to that of a hand inside of a glove. While the hand is inserted inside the glove, the glove will move as the hand moves. The gloved hand will appear to be alive. When the hand is removed, the glove becomes motionless because the life so to speak, that animated it has withdrawn. There is a need to distribute the electromagnetic instructions generated by the brain to the rest of the body. This function is conducted by the five aspects of the soul. In order of function, they are the consciousness fluid. This is an astral fluid that fills the seven brain cavities, the so-called seven-branched candlestick, with its fire. It imparts electromagnetic impulses to 12 pairs of cranial nerves. The nerve fluid. Via the nerve fluid issuing from the 12 pairs of cranial nerves in the brain, 12 faculties, 12 attributes are called into existence. These 12 faculties are responsible for communicating with the organs of the body and controlling their functions. The serpent fire is the third aspect of the soul. It has its seat in the innermost channel of the spinal column. It connects the fire of consciousness in the head sanctuary with the sacral plexus located at the lower end of the spinal column. These two points form the two magnetic poles of our personality. Past and present both express themselves in this axis of the personality. The spinal nerves transmit this essence to the entire system. And the result is that human beings will behave entirely in accordance with what is expressed in the serpent fire. The hormonal secretions. To bring the circulation of nerve fluids to its completion requires the help of a fourth 
soul aspect. The hormonal secretions produced by the endocrine glands. Each of these endocrine glands has a special task to perform. Each secretes a different hormone, which is transmitted to the fifth soul fluid, the blood. The results of the thinking processes are anchored in the blood. In the blood, through the blood, the state of consciousness becomes the state of life. The endocrine glands are known as ductless glands because they do not require a tube or a channel to transport their fluids throughout the body. Each ductless gland physically corresponds to one of the seven main chakras. They are the physical manifestations of the seven main chakras. The ductless glands function as electromagnetic transformer stations. They receive electromagnetic impulses from the nervous system and convert those impulses into a type of fluid that will impel the organs of the body to act in obedience to the thought or feeling that generated the impulse. The electromagnetic secretions from these glands act upon the body instantaneously. So here we see how, by way of a process, the consciousness in the head sanctuary transmits the frequency of its thought vibrations to the blood. The spirit spark atom is a non-physical atom of divine origin. It contains all of the codes and instructions necessary to restore the divine nature of the microcosm and the human personality being. This divine atom is positioned in the mathematical center of the microcosm, a location that roughly aligns with the upper right portion of the physical human heart. also known as the rose of the heart and the jewel in the lotus. This seed of divinity lies dormant in most human beings at this time. The spirit spark is a remnant of our divine past and along with the microcosm is the only part of the human life system that is immortal. This divine atom plays a key role in the process of transfiguration. By distributing the Gnostic light power that it receives, it acts as a start point and a facilitator of the cycle of purification known as the Kundalini of the heart that was mentioned earlier. At this point, we will add a bit more detail to our understanding of that process. The kundalini of the heart is the circulation of light power that drives the purification process. The sincere yearning of the human being transmits a particular vibration to the spirit spark atom in the heart sanctuary. The sleeping rosebud resonates with this yearning vibration and responds by broadcasting it. In essence, it sends out a call to the divine realms. The response is a stream of purifying Gnostic vibrations emanating from an inexhaustible divine source. These incoming vibrations fill the heart sanctuary with divine light power. The blood carries these new vibrations to the head sanctuary. The head sanctuary responds to the purifying vibration and gradually 
the thinking processes in the head sanctuary begin to change. There is an elevation of thought. The Gnostic vibrations are passed on to the astral body. The astral body saturates the etheric double with these vibrations. And the etheric double transfers the divine vibration to the blood. The purified blood then returns to the heart sanctuary, where the cycle of purification begins again. The subtle bodies and the five aspects of the human being constitute the soul of the human being during its life on earth. As mentioned in the introduction, the soul was originally designed to function as an intermediary between spirit and the body. Our soul is a temporary, mortal soul that is only active during earth life. After death, all of its constituent parts dissolve and vanish over time. One of the aims of the purification process that has been described is to use immortal divine vibrations to restore the link between the earthly personality and the divine universal spirit. A spirit soul human being. We call this the birth of a new soul. It is the aim of every candidate who walks the path of return to achieve this glorious goal and fulfill the divine plan of salvation that will enable the human consciousness to reconnect with its original divine home. This reminds us of a quote attributed to Albert Einstein which stated, Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality that you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. When the microcosm has been completely purified by the repeating cycles of the Kundalini of the heart, a new soul is born. We can even use the word reborn. The purification and transformation process is complete. All that remains is to experience transfiguration. Transfiguration is the process of raising the consciousness and vibration of the entire microcosm to a divine state. Transfiguration is not a mere transformation. It is a glorification that raises the entire microcosm and its human personality to a vibrational frequency that will enable it to relink with spirit, consciously perceive the activity of the new life field, and, like the prodigal son, return to its divine home. The School of the Golden Rosy Cross exists to help those who voluntarily choose to walk this path of return to a good end.